next up is adding a phone, which is also very straightforward. So what we're going to do is start off on the iPhone side of things and literally just going to hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, and we're looking for Ford Mustang. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Numbers matched up, so we're pairing. I'm going to hit don't allow for, for contacts. Safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. And I'm connected. 911 assist, I can toggle that one on. One of the benefits there is that if we're in an accident, the vehicle's got to automatically dial 911 for us if we've got that setting turned on and the accident meets certain conditions automatically download our contacts, yes or no, and we just hit finish. From there, the phone itself is connected. So as you can see, we've got my contacts, we've got the phone keypad, we've got our Siri assistant. So if we do a press and hold, so you can see there, we can activate our Siri assistant by pressing the button on the steering wheel. So we just press and hold that button in order to get the Siri assistant going there instead. So a few different options available. If we go back to our audio, look at our sources now. You can see we've got my iPhone that's been connected and then we can also go Live X Live. So Live One, which is a radio app through our phone. A few other apps will work directly through the screen without having to actually connect through USB, which is definitely a nice thing. But that's gonna be the basics of setting a phone up inside of this thing. As you can see, there are a few other options that are available. Now, we do have the flexibility of setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we'll start off on the Apple CarPlay side. I'm just gonna insert that USB cable into that front port. We're gonna take the cable insert it into the phone. Now let's give it a few seconds there. So Apple CarPlay, we're just going to hit continue. Privacy turns and conditions, we're going to approve that. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. And we're connected and it's literally that simple. So as you can see, we've got my messages, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. So if your vehicle doesn't have factory navigation, not a big deal because you still have the flexibility to use any of these other map applications instead. We can go back to our main screen there if we want to. And we do have the flexibility to customize this thing a little bit. So on our phone, if we go to general, we can go to CarPlay, and then we select Sync 3, customize, I hope I selected the right one. And then all we do is whatever one we want at the top, we just do a drag and drop. And as you can see there, it's literally letting us adjust as necessary. So we can adjust ones, we can delete certain things as well. So if we're never gonna listen to certain things, it drops it down to the bottom tray. And we can also just do a reset to bring this whole screen back to the factory default layout instead. Moving back to that main screen, I already showed you, we've got Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze. If we wanted to listen to podcasts, we've got the flexibility to do it. We can browse through and look at different, look at our categories there for our podcasts. Same idea with our audiobooks and a few other options. So a ton of flexibility here. Now, if for whatever reason you want to get back to that main sync screen, we just hit the forward button there, and that brings us back to this main screen. Because we're connected through CarPlay, we've got our phone, which will launch us in, map, which will launch us into CarPlay. We can relaunch into Apple CarPlay if we want to or we can go to our CarPlay preferences. So with CarPlay, we can remove the phone or we can temporarily disable CarPlay. If we do, so as you can see there, I'm still charging up, which is a nice thing, but we're now relying on our factory navigation instead. So we do have quite a little bit of flexibility, but that's how simple it is to be able to set up Apple CarPlay inside of this vehicle. Right, and setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So very, very straightforward to do it. So as you can see there, we're currently still connected to my iPhone. So we're going to, if we go into our phone, I want you to see something. So see, as you can see there, we are still connected. We can go to our settings there along the bottom and hit phone to add in a new one. But if we're on this screen, we can hit change phone, which will jump us back into that main setting. So you can see we're connected through my iPhone, but I can easily Search add in another your device. On your device and, select it once it is found. and same idea, we're just waiting for Mustang to show up on the Android device. There we go. So Ford Mustang. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pin numbers match up, which is great. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. So really that simple to be able to connect. And then as you can see there, we've now got another option. Do we want to save it as set it as the favorite phone? So if you've got multiple phones is which one is going to get connection priority? So if both phones are in the vehicle, which one is it going to attempt to connect to first? And then we can download our contacts automatically if we want to, and we're fully connected to our phone. So for the Galaxy now, we've got our Google, our phone assistant, so we can activate Bixby if we want to. So as you can see there, we've got our just regular command. We can do a long press and hold in order to be able to activate our phone assistant instead. So we've got quite a few different options that are available there. And moving back, ah, there we go, phone assistant. So Bixby, I don't have it activated as of right now, unfortunately. But same idea, we've got my contacts, we've got phone keypad, audio, 
if we move back into our sources, Galaxy S9 is an available option there. So we can literally plug through in order to listen to our Bluetooth audio there instead. But very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things. We do have the flexibility of setting up Android Auto. Very straightforward. We take our USB cable, plug it into that front USB port, opposite end of the cable, into our phone, Perfect, there we go. And Android Auto would like to, so all we have to do is hit next there, and we just hit continue on the screen, and we have to agree there. And a few seconds, and three, two. Oh, that's weird. Oh, you know what it is? Oh no, I just noticed this. I've got like some crazy fraying on the bottom of this. Oh no, I wonder if this is gonna work. Oh, let's find out, let's try this again. Up oh, and in. Perfect, Android Auto, so we are fully connected there. So as you can see, ton of other options. We've got our podcast there. So if we wanted to listen to our audio on our phone, on our Samsung device, our Android device, we've got our music, we've got notification center, and then we've also got our Google Assistant. So if you don't want to use the Apple, or if you don't want to use Bixby, you've got the flexibility of doing it once you're connected through our Android Auto instead. We can click back through to this main screen. We've got our Google Maps, and that's the only option. So unfortunately on the Sync 3 system, on this, we don't have the option for Waze, because Waze is installed on this phone. We just don't have the flexibility of using it directly through this screen, unfortunately. But we do at least have Google Maps. So if your vehicle doesn't have factory navigation, same idea, we can just use our Google Maps instead. We can press the Ford button there in order to jump back into this main screen. And as you can see, we've got our Android and our Apple CarPlay. We can jump back into Android Auto there. We can go to our main screen in order to go to this one, flip back into our maps instead, and then we can go to some other options. So we've got our route options, guidance, and a few other things there. So very straightforward to use it. And then as you can see there, so just disconnecting from Android Auto. It's literally as simple as pulling out. <laughs> pulling out, that's what she said. All right, it's a few options there. So Android Auto, we're disconnected, so I can now remove the Galaxy and watch this. When I do, gets rid of that button on the tray. Same idea, Apple CarPlay, let's remove that from the tray fully removed as well. So literally that simple to set up Android and iPhone devices to this vehicle. So that'll be the basics of adding a phone into the vehicle. As you can see there, both phones are still technically connected. So if we go change phone along the very top, we've got both phones now, so we can either easily disconnect or we can completely remove it. We're removing it exactly like that, so disconnected. We can reconnect that main phone or we can just remove, remove, and it's now removed. So literally that easy in order to be able to set up an Android and iPhone device in the vehicle. So setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is not really that difficult inside of this thing. Literal, just like plug and play solution. But if you ran in any problems, you need some clarification on anything, drop down in the comment section below and let, let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, take care.